we are here to talk about the boys club <laughs> or you know the club that maybe you don't fit into right are you in an industry that there is a lot of guys or or a male vibe masculine vibe do you see the male leaders around you having the most success uh, do you feel like you have to emulate those male leaders in order to have success, to be seen as a leader, to get promoted, to make sales, etc.? I see this a lot in the professional world, for sure, in certain industries. Like I live in San Francisco, and there's a lot of tech here, and there is a very real stereotype of the tech guy, right? And it is a guy and there's all these startups and yes there are female startup founders amazing female startup founders i have one as a client right now actually but uh, overall there's a lot of men in the startup world if you're picking up what i'm putting down if you're relating to this give me a little like or a comment or a hell yes in the chat box because <laughs> i see this all the time and then in the entrepreneurial world more my world you know I see so many of the leadership coaches and sales coaches are either men, it's mostly men. I mean, even think of somebody like Tony Robbins. He's awesome. I think he's great. But he's definitely a really masculine guy. Um, Brendan Bouchard, there's a lot of like masculine energy in the coaching industry, uh, in the entrepreneurial space. And even if it's not actually men, I see a lot of women in the entrepreneurial space, also the leading from that masculine energy. I'm gonna talk about what I mean by that, but if you understand what I mean, you know, say yes in the chat box, because uh, uh, you are seeing this too. So what is happening out there is that, w with these kind of masculine environments, is that the qualities or the, the values that are being valued that are the qualities that are being valued there we go are um, getting shit done being you could say assertive but maybe even aggressive being super direct even to the point of coldness or intimidation getting results no matter what so that means driving to a result, no matter what, you know, no matter if it hurts other people, no matter if other people lose, you know, that's the extreme masculine value system. Now ask yourself, is that your value system? That might be what you think success means, but is that your personal value system? And if it isn't, it's gonna feel really uncomfortable to be in this more masculine environment. So I work with a lot of introverted women. And the women I work with tend to be on the shyer side. They're quieter by nature. They feel more comfortable in the background, behind the scenes. They um, probably identify as empathic, empathetic, compassionate, caring passionate people yeah that that feel more comfortable in the the zone the the quality of connection versus impact mm -hmm. and i relate to that you know i uh, i for sure i i remember as a kid i just wanted to stay in the background be alone really because i was afraid of standing out and I was afraid of not being liked and I was afraid of what people thought of me. But I had such a strong desire to be seen for, for the passion that I had, for the creativity I had, for, um, you know, for the vulnerability that I had as well. For me personally, something that I learned very early on in life because of how my family was is that I, I took charge and that was the way that I managed my fears. So by taking charge sort of from a masculine place, actually, I, um, I felt safe because I was in control. That doesn't mean that it was ultimately the best choice. It got me through the early part of my life until I started to experience a lot of burnout, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of disassociation because this is my own experience, my own perspective, because my feminine nature was not being honored. 
Hmm, my feminine nature. So let's take a step back and talk about these words, masculine and feminine. I could be talking about men and women, but really I'm talking about qualities, qualities. You know, uh, what is a feminine quality in a person, whether it's a man or a woman? Well, feminine quality is receptive, magnetic, attracting, attracting or attractive. Whereas a masculine quality that's sort of the opposite of that would be action oriented, go out and make it happen, um, you know, draw that person in not by flirting, say, but by sort of pushing them there. In fact, it's making me, as I talk about this, it's making me think about our trip to Mexico that we went on, my husband and I, in September. Oh my God, this trip was amazing. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, but there was this thing that we did while we were there. We did a um, what's called a sales presentation. I think that's what they call it. Or they just call it a presentation for the resort to find out about their, you know, like timeshare programs. And so I, I my husband and I went up into their sales office after a tour around the property and sat down with this saleswoman. And she was good. She was good. You know, we weren't sold and we didn't buy anything, but she was really good. And we reflected afterwards because my husband has a background in corporate sales. And he said she was really good, but she was really good at that particular kind of sales model, which was definitely the masculine quality sales model of hard clothes. It's a hard, cold clothes. You know, they don't know you from the moment they walk in. They don't know anything about you. They expect to close you within an hour to an hour and a half. It's a hard, cold close. So that's a masculine approach to leadership. Leading someone quickly and forcefully, really, it felt, it felt that way, being in that room, into a decision and action. Whereas I, I realized through this experience that a feminine close would be more about the relationship. Uh, more about really caring about the, what the person wants and needs and overcoming their objections. I'm talking about sales right now, right? Overcoming their objections, not through pushing or forcing, but through truly deeply understanding what they need and, you know, feeling out if truly it's a good fit. There are benefits to both these kind of sales and there are benefits to both kinds of qualities that we've been talking about. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not dissing any of them. I'm just trying to say that in the modern professional world, a lot, I would say it's, it's everywhere in every industry, but certainly in, in some industries, the masculine energy is dominant, right? And the feminine qualities get either pushed to the side or diminished, even actively, you know, like um, repressed is the word that's coming to mind. Yeah, repressed or just you know, they're thought less that less of. So, for example, the word bitchy is a great example of that. A woman, when she speaks up and she's a little bit aggressive, might be labeled bitchy. But if a man did the same thing, the same way of expressing himself fully, would he be called bitchy? He might be called a jerk if he goes too far, right? <laughs> he might be. But actually, it's often perceived much differently when a man gets emotional like that. That word emotional comes up here, right? Women hate that when they're called emotional or when somebody says, just calm down, just calm down. Yeah, well, there's elements of being a woman being or there's elements of, of feminine qualities that I think are really lost. And so you're going to be experiencing that in your life as overwhelm, burnout, anxiety, uh, fear of the audience's judgment, a feeling of perfectionism, like I need to live up to the standards that are there that... I don't even know if I can live up to because they're not my standards, right? They're not, they're not what I even value. So you could feel like you could never live up to those standards. And that in and of itself is 
so anxiety provoking. I was just bringing up my notes to make sure I was on track with what I wanted to talk about because I'm, I'm getting into this topic. I'm getting into it. Uh, I wanted to talk about why acting like a man will actually not win you respect. You might think it would, but the reason I say that is because other, let's say you're in an office full of men and you're the one or two, there's like one or two women. You trying to act like the other men and be part of that boys club is not actually going to win you the respect that you want because you're not one of them. You're not. You actually are a different being. That's my perspective. Of course, I know that there's a lot of gray area in between and I want to be sensitive because there's other genders out there, right? But I guess I'm breaking it down more into men and women right now. And you can identify where where you fit in that category. So please, please be gentle with me as I navigate this topic. So the boys club that's dominant in especially the tech world, the professional industry, in sales, you know, that is not you. As an introverted empathic woman, I actually don't fit in in the boys club. Yeah. And the boys club can tell that you don't fit in, like they know it. <laughs> so you trying to be like them means that you're not being yourself and nobody's going to respect you for not being yourself. Just in general, that's a blanket thing, right? If you are trying to be somebody else or trying to put on a show, that lowers the trust and respect of you from anybody else. Does that make sense? I'm going to grab some water. So you, as an introverted, empathic woman, are different. I really recommend that you embrace that difference. That's actually when you start to gain respect and are more trusted by those around you and see more as a leader. And then I said, how to dissolve the boys club vibe in your office or your leadership team or in your industry? What do I mean by that? How to dissolve the boys club vibe? <laughs> Well, you've got to bring the feminine vibe. Now, what does that look like? The feminine vibe has an element of seduction to it. Hmm, seduction. You can be just as powerful as any man in that boys club, but in a different way. Actually, I think the feminine nature can be even more impactful. And I just realized I threw out the word seductive there and that that might have been misconstrued because I mean, I don't mean anything in terms of sexuality or chair dancing or, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, what are they called? You know, escorts or anything. I'm not, I don't mean anything like that. No, seduction is a quality of presence. We could also call it flirt flirtatiousness. The best salesman is the master of seduction because he has the balance of the cold, hard sales, masculine drive approach with that quality of being so happy being right here with you and excited about the thing that we're talking about. How, like, would you like to know more? And I want to share more with you. Do you know what I'm talking about? How would the feminine energy enroll your audience in your ideas? What would you do differently with your voice, with your body to let yourself attract the people in the room. This is not about being a sex object for men, um, but being your true nature. And so this might be controversial, this video I'm realizing as I talk about it. Uh, yet I see it's so true. My cat's over here wanting to say hi. Come on, buddy, you can say hi into the video. Come on. Here he is. Bring Tuxie up to say hi. Hi, buddy. Okay. 
And then I say, what's the cost of you trying to fit into the club? This is important because if you're going to try something new that might be a little scary, that might be a little like um, risque, risky, like what I'm suggesting of being flirtatious and having fun and um, coming from your feminine receptive energy, then you got to understand the cost of doing what you probably have been doing, which is trying to fit into the club. So the cost of that is your sanity, really. Like if you're feeling burnt out, it's because you're trying to do business like a man. If you are burnt out, if, if you're overwhelmed, it's because you're trying to act like uh, the other masculine people around you. This could also be like you're trying to act like the extroverts around you too. Yeah, so that's often a masculine quality too. The extroverted quality is like, go out there, make stuff happen, do it, do it. Even if you don't feel like it, do it. That's a masculine quality and, and you could call it a more extroverted quality too. So the cost will be adrenal fatigue over time. The cost will be a reduced immune system. Um, the, the cost will be feeling masculine. <laughs> so you might end up wearing like really boxy clothes or dark colors so that you don't stand out or not taking good care of yourself in general so that you're overweight, something like that. This is all part of denying your feminine nature. The feminine nature wants to feel good. The feminine nature wants you to feel good. So anything that you're doing that takes away from that, that denies that, uh, you're costing yourself a lot. And then I, I put here what to do instead that will make you feel so much more relaxed and confident. I already got into that a bit, you know, like what you're going to do is show up from a soft and open place of receptivity. What needs to be said here? What, what aspect of me and my presence is most useful here? Let's say you walk into a meeting or walk into, you go into a Zoom meeting, I assume is these, that's the truth these days. And it's all men and you, and they're talking about the sports they did over the weekend. Yeah, that's a very concrete situation where you might feel very left out. And you wanna be part of that leadership team. You wanna feel like you're part of things and you want the opportunities that maybe they have that you don't. Well, I would invite you to look for rapport with them that is on your terms. So this is such a generalization, but maybe they're talking about the game and you, um, you know that there's this like food dish that they all like that you really like too, and you talk about the food. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's, it's, it's hard out of context to, to give you suggestions, but you know, maybe it's that you change the topic completely this is something that you know everybody can get into. Uh, you know, a restaurant that is nearby, if you guys all live in the same place, or something that's happening in the world right now, or something that you're excited about, a vacation that's coming up. You can take charge and change the topic. Another thing that works really well, this is just coming to me now um, for women, is to sort of make fun of men um, for, for being in their boys club, you like to call them out on it, which brings the attention to the woman, um, without, without having to address the topic at all. Play with, play with how you can include yourself in the conversation while enjoying yourself, you know? There's no need to try to be somebody else. You're going to step in there and be yourself and watch how the conversation changes. Because often the boys club feel will happen because you haven't taken the risk to insert yourself in it. You know what I mean? And so they, you know, they just go ahead and do, they don't worry about it. They don't even, probably don't even think about it. I hope this was helpful to you to think this through and to think about feminine 
energy. Every woman has a feminine essence, that's my belief, and she's often very disconnected from it. It's her softness, her receptivity, and I think her power. So if you can come at your power from a different angle, from a more feminine angle, you might be really surprised what's possible through your voice. If you'd like more practices, concrete practices to bring you into that feminine essence and into your confidence and relaxed presence, I put a link in the description for my free mini course. It's called the Performance Anxiety Toolkit. So go ahead and grab that. It's my gift to you. You'll, you'll learn in about 15, 20 minutes some practices that are so easy to do and yet make a huge impact on how you feel. All right. I'll